Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm gonna do another live preset build that's gonna be based on the jump channel of the Matchless DC30. In the last week's poll inside my YouTube community page you were given the choice to pick between this amp and the La, and the La Grammatico <laughs> Lagrange jump channel. So uh, you guys went with the Matchless and I think that's great, but I also think that you should check out the Grammatico V2 from the folder that you can find in the description below because it also sounds pretty great. But this is free preset 49 out of 50. So I'm gonna build this from scratch, but the only difference uh, from the previous video is that I already chose the blocks that I want to use. I haven't heard the preset at all. I haven't played a single note yet, but uh, I just made the blocks available so I don't have to scroll through the menus and figure out what I want to do. So let's go, let's make the matchless uh, DC30 jump channel preset. Okay, so we are inside Podgo Edit as always, and we have the Matchstick Jump, which is the jump channel of the Matchless DC30. Uh, the reverb I added this time is the plate reverb. So let's hear how this sounds uh, with the controls pretty much set at noon and the plate uh, reverb active. What I'm gonna do immediately is bring down the decay of this plate reverb. I'm also gonna assign it a snapshot, sorry if I went uh, through this uh, too fast, uh, because I'm gonna make one or two snapshots with this, maybe three, so I'm gonna select that the decay and the mix control are both uh, controlled by uh, snapshots. So uh, decay at three and mix at 30%. So let's try first full volume on my neck pickup. <laughs> So it sounds pretty thick, pretty saturated. Now I want to try a different microphone on this cabinet. I'm not gonna change the, the cabinet because I think the, the, the matching one will go fine with this. So let's switch the 160 ribbon to the 420 dynamic and let's increase the distance uh, by an inch. <laughs> Okay, now going from full volume, let's go to, I don't know, five or six also on my neck pickup. <clears throat> this is the fourth position. And finally, the bridge humbucker single coil full volume, you can hear the noise. <laughs> So let's try to experiment with a few controls. The first thing that I'm gonna try is altering the tone control. So let's go from one to six. I'm gonna go back to my neck pickup full volume and check the tone on one. <clears throat>
honestly, well, I was expecting the difference to be more drastic between one and six. <laughs> So the only thing that I hear now when I turn on the 6 is that it gets a tiny bit fatter in the low end. But I don't know, every time I do these videos I kind of lo lose my ears a bit and I concentrate too much on what I'm doing in front of the screen. But that's what I'm hearing from uh, now. So I'm gonna set the tone at 4. <laughs> Now let's check the cut control. It was at 1 all this time, let's max it out to 10. So this cut control kind of works like it does on the on the box amp, so it controls the top end. So the more you bring it up, the more top end you're gonna lose. So, honestly, I'm gonna bring it up just a bit uh, from the default value, which was 1. I'm gonna try to bring it up to 3. So the other thing that I want to try is uh, clean the first snapshot just a bit. So let's bring down the channel 1 drive and see what happens. Nothing especially, the channel 2 drive. Okay, now, we, now the amp actually cleans up a bit. But now we have to compensate a bit for the loss of volume and I'm gonna assign that the channel volume is also controlled by snapshots. So in this snapshot one we're obviously building some sort of uh, fairly clean tone. It's definitely not clean. It's still where it'll break up very much, but let's try to keep it a bit more clean. That's too much. Honestly, I want to bring both uh, drives just a bit more down. And now uh, I finally unveiled the blocks that I've added here. I want to add the chorus to this cleanish sound. Ah. The one thing that I like about the chorus is not just the effect, but the effect that it has on the notes, on the attack you hear on the strings, meaning you hear a bit less of it. So with the chorus, the tone gets a bit softer, if that makes any sense. We have to use terms like this. The tone gets softer when you use the chorus, at least in my ears. So uh, what do I have here? I have the 70s chorus and these are my default settings, I guess. Okay, so let's save this preset and let's call this snapshot one clean clean mod. The next thing that I want to do is something a bit more overdriven. So let's switch to snapshot number two. Let's turn off the chorus 
and let's up both of the drives again back to where they were and let's bring back the, the channel volume <clears throat> I'm gonna try the bridge pickup and I can hear some noise so I'm gonna also assign that the input gate is uh, controlled by snapshots I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna set my threshold where I find find appropriate <coughs> So I guess this works as a crunch sound. Does it work as a crunch sound? I don't know, you'll be the judge. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is create a lead sound. Now I'm gonna switch to snapshot number three. I'm gonna kick in the delay and that is the transistor tape. But I'm also gonna kick in the Minotaur, which is the emulation of the clone Centaur. And we get something like this. So maybe I'll bring down the feedback uh, of this transistor tape just a bit and I actually won't touch any of the other controls because uh, actually I'm gonna adjust the headroom because I'm expecting that most of you guys will have uh, guitars that are much higher in output than mine so I don't want this uh, delay block to uh, saturate too much it will saturate because that's the way this blocks works uh, but I don't want it to uh, make your delays all grainy and nasty so I guess we have now what we have the crunch as snapshot number two and we have the lead as snapshot number three uh, I'm also gonna color code these, so clean mod will be blue, crunch will be light orange, and lead will be red. So let's quickly go through all three of them. So first one is the clean with the modulation block. Second one is the crunch without the modulation block, so amp, cabinet and reverb only. <laughs> and finally we have snapshot number three, which includes the Minotaur as an overdrive block and transistor tape as a delay block. <laughs> And as with the previous preset, uh, I'm going to show you my uh, global EQ because it, of course, affects the way this tone will be perceived by you and by me. I have a high cut set at 6.9k, a small boost uh, at 2k with a very wide Q, 
a small dip at 5k with a very narrow queue and I have a very small boost at 120 and the low cut is set at 60. However, if you're not using the global EQ, I'm gonna make the low cut inside the parametric EQ block and I'm gonna do it just randomly at 85 hertz and 7.6k. Okay, so I guess that's it. You have three snapshots based on the matchless DC30 conveniently named matchstick jump inside the line 6 part go. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short little tutorial and tone build and excuse me for all the mistakes that I'm doing while I'm playing. That's an issue that I've been having from the moment I started doing videos as soon as I click and I see that red button flashing and that red button means that I'm recording a video, my guitar skills drop like 70% at least. We still have one more free preset uh, to go and you can expect a poll somewhere uh, in the next day or two inside my YouTube uh, community page. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do that now. You can also leave a like in this video if you like this video and I'll see you all soon. Adio!